Nailed it. I'm here with Aston Villa's Ollie Watkins on behalf of Boots Online. Dr. Ollie, good to see you, mate. How you been? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Yes, very good, mate. Now, let's get straight to it. You are absolutely flying at the minute. You must be buzzing with how the season's going, not just for your team, but for you personally as well. Yeah, delighted. I've had a good start to the season. I had a, a little bit of a, uh, a sticky patch and, and so did the team, but we've came out of that now and uh, yeah, we're playing our best football. I feel like I'm, I'm confident, enjoying it and in a good place. You're being very modest there, mate, because yeah. every time you play, you're either getting on the score sheet or getting assists. What would you put that down? To? Is there a secret? No, I just feel like I've got a better game understanding. The managers come in. There's a few things that I've worked on that have helped me improve my game and it's taken me to the next level. Would you say you've done more with your fitness, your physical fitness? When I first moved to Brentford, actually, from Exeter, uh, I started doing a lot of gym work. John McGinn actually gets up old photos of me when I was at Exeter and I, he said I was on the bread roll diet just because I was... <laughs> he loves a wind up, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he loves it. He loves it. Right now. But um, no, I just used to do, do like pure weights, upper body and I, you know, that's no good for you. Now I'm, I focus a lot on my legs, my core, nutrition as well. Yeah. Every year I play, you learn something new. Yeah, so interesting. So many players say that. What, what is your sort of typical pre-match meal then? To be fair, I always stick with spag bowl. Do you? Yeah, Every I've game. always. Yeah, I have like changed a little bit with porridge. I may have some porridge. Yeah. If it's 12.30 game, I'll have porridge and a bagel. But normally I have spag bowl. That's just something I, I, I enjoy eating. Like a lot of the lads tend to eat pancakes now. Do they? Yeah, which pancakes? is. Pancakes? Yeah. Um, with what? Not, not syrup and sugar. Yeah, syrup, and, really? syrup and berries, yeah. Wow. But I have that in the well, morning. Pre game they have that. Pre game, okay. yeah. A lot, of, a lot of players eat that now. Like, wow. yeah, top all the top players. It's a little bit superstitious. I find that if I'm, I'm eating my, my spag bowl, I'm tend to, I tend to score. You tend so. to score well. <laughs> yeah. So you're one of them, if you don't have your spag bowl, it's on your mind. Yeah, you, a little bit. I, I'm, not, I'm not as bad as some, some lads. Yeah, I feel like my nutrition is, is pretty on point. I'm pretty precise and yeah. I like things a certain way, but that's just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Yeah. Take me to a typical match day for you. I know what you're eating, but what is your, your build up to a, say it's a three o'clock game on a Saturday. What's your build up? Wake up in the morning. I always wake up early as well, just because my body clock just wakes me up. So I can't like What time's early, in. what are you saying? 7.30. Oh really, wow. So okay. I'm always up. I'll go up. I'm probably one of the first to go down for breakfast. Me and big Robin Olsen, the goalkeeper. Yeah, what's he eating? He'll have a crepe, but he'll just have nothing on it. Really? And I'm like, oh, dry, that's, that's the driest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Like you gotta have some syrup, and he's like, "No, I take it like that. I take it like that." <laughs> Where's he I think from? it's a Swedish, a <laughs> yeah. Swedish way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Ollie, after a game, say you've got a knock or a blister, not a serious injury, but pain that you need recovering from. How do you a get to sleep and b manage that? I'll probably be peppering the doctor. Would so you <laughs> give me so some? So leaning on pain. advice is important for the medical professionals. Yeah. yeah, saying what would you do, listen to his suggestions, take them on board and then and then go from there really to use them there for a reason, aren't they? So they'll they'll definitely help. How important is it on a match day as well? Because we hear about players getting hyped up for a game and being psychologically ready, but is, is there a chance that you can be too pumped for a big game? And how important is it to actually stay calm and, and relaxed? And, and what do you do to keep yourself calm? It's best just to be calm and composed. Like I see Douglas Louise, he'll sit there before. He'll just be chilling in his pants. And then we got five minutes to go out. Everyone's like, Dougie, you gonna go on, Dougie? <laughs> really? Then he just puts his kit wow. on and he's the best thing. And it made me realise like, I'm doing all these stretches, like I'm trying to do everything. Yeah. And you don't need to do that. Like, yeah. you can just be a little bit more relaxed. How important is the mental side of the game and you, you keeping your head and keeping cool and calm when there's, when there's a massive game, say, and you're, it's an evening kickoff and you're live on TV and there's loads to play for. Is, it, is the mental side really important when that was for Yeah, I think if I've missed two chances and then I just let my head go down and it, let it get to me and be thinking about those chances, that's what I used to do and then that would ruin my whole game for 90 minutes. Whereas now I'm like, if I've missed a chance, oh, it's, I kind of look at it in a positive way, like at least I'm getting a chance. Right. I'm there to miss it and then I back myself to score the next one. So how have you changed that mindset then? Because that, that sounds like it's something that makes perfect sense, but it's easier said than done. So have you had coaching for that? Have you spoken yeah, to about it? Yeah, I've got like a guy who I speak to a lot and he helps me. He, he helps me with a lot of things. He's definitely helped me because I would put so much pressure on myself and all my previous managers would say that about me, like, just because you want to do really well, but like, relax, you, yeah. you can't force it. You just need to let things happen naturally. I'm just intrigued to know how important sleep factor is because so many players say it's something that's very difficult, particularly after a game. So how much time do you focus on actually your rest and your recovery period? Yeah, I think sleep before and after a game is really crucial. I go to bed early on 
the night before a game just because of my body clock. Or like I said to you, it always, I always wake up the same time every day, even on my day off. Really? It's frustrating that when that happens. Yeah, yeah. Some, of the really lads, frustrating. some of the lads are laying into 11. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that, but <laughs> yeah. I just can't do it. Sometimes when, you, when you've had an eight o'clock kickoff, you've got so much adrenaline going through you, I could stay up literally all night. But uh, if I just get into my bed, don't lay on my phone, kind of force myself to go to sleep, then I end up finding that my recoveries are definitely a lot better than yeah. And in terms of your physical health and everything, do you take any other vitamins or supplements or any other anything else you do on a weekly basis to help maximise performance? Yeah, I take fish oils, omega threes, turmerics, calcium tablets. And from a health point of view, is there anything else that you have that affects you on a, on a daily basis or affects you on a match day? Not on a daily basis, but I have asthma. So Just how did that come it's about? sporadically, really. Like it's always been a thing in my life. I've, I it? grew up with it. Yeah, I went to the doctors and they said I had asthma, but I never thought it was a big thing. I was always good at running and stuff like that, so it never really affected me too much. It's just when the weather's a little bit colder, especially yeah. in England all the time. Yeah, yeah, lots uh, of day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my chest would tighten up and then I'd need my inhaler, so yeah. uh, I just used to it. In terms of your post-match, when you finish the game then, your recovery, your rest? Like, because I'm so kind of strict in the week, yeah. um, if it's Saturday to Saturday, I'll, I'll definitely have like a takeaway or... Yeah. I know it's key to put in like good food after the game yeah. and stuff like that, but we are human. Yeah, exactly. Some people think that we're not human, so yeah, yeah. I, I love the Chinese man. and Did, I was Indian, just yeah. about to say that. What is, it, what is your favourite? If you could pick one, your favourite oh, cheat meal? I don't know. I don't know. I'm Chinese man at the moment. Yeah, Chinese I feel like there's, so, there's well. so much to choose I from. Totally agree. It's the variety on a Chinese yeah, I know, menu, I know. especially if you've got more people. Exactly. A bit of everything. Yeah, are you one of them that shares, or do you? Do you yeah, just before have your own I was dish? like, oh, you're not touching that. <laughs> That's my sesame prawn time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but now I'm like, yeah, let's all let's all dig in. What was that like? That moment being called up for England, scoring on your debut with your first shot on target. I think I'm right in yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. Just talk to me about that whole day from a Ollie Watkins point of view. I remember going onto the pitch. I was dropping deep. I was trying to get a touch of the ball. I didn't touch you it for the, the ball first. All the time. Yeah, I didn't touch <laughs> it for the first ten minutes. And then, yeah, when Phil Foden passed it to me, I turned and shot, and I just seen it in slow motion, kind of going yeah. through the defender's legs. But it was a bit of a bit of sweet moment because it was there was no fans in the stadium. Yeah, of course. So like all my family are watching it from the television. So it'd been nice to have them there. But what can you do? Yeah, still an unbelievably proud moment. Yeah, it was, it was a good moment. Yeah, and and when you you turn up and playing for England, does that just elevate your game to a different level? I mean, I imagine training was just. Yeah, the standards so so high yeah. you kind of feel like you have to you know rise up to that level and yeah you can't really go missing and uh, you've got to try and take your opportunity when it when it's there so yeah i love being in the england setup and it's something i'm striving to to do more finally ollie if you could go back and give advice to a young ollie watkins what would you say to him i feel like it's a difficult one really because i've always put a lot of pressure on myself but I feel like that's got me to where I am today because of that. Right, okay. So maybe not put as much and just try and enjoy it a little bit more. Because yeah. that's why you got into football in the first exactly. place, right? Love exactly. it. Ollie, absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you, You're mate. absolutely flying. All the best the rest Cheers. of the season. Thank Top you. man. Boots Online Doctor is a quick and easy way to get prescription treatments without a trip to the doctor. For more information, click the link.